Dendrobium is the second largest genus when it comes to orchids. It has more than 1,000 species divided into several sections and subsections based on both floral and vegetative characteristics. Many go through a growth phase and then rest phase during the course of one year and must be provided with preferred care when it comes to watering, fertilizing and temperatures to coincide with these periods of growth and rest. Owing to the extreme diversity of the genus, in the cases where the culture coincides, the Dendrobium genus has been categorized into the following main types. And speaking of coinciding factors, as per Orchid Ninja Nina San's request, this video is going to briefly cover the different Dendrobium types, which category type they fall under, and the general care of those category types will be depicted in little care cards for each one, with some examples of the species that fall under the category, so feel free to screenshot those for future reference if you should need to refer to something really quickly. And please know that if there is interest in a more detailed video on any of the Dendrobium sections as a single care video, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, I do hope that the corresponding care cards for each section will be of great help as far as untangling the different or, as in some cases, very similar culture requirements. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and welcome to the patio. Let's talk dendrobiums. I love that. If I may, before we go to the types, let's distinguish hard cane versus soft cane dendrobiums. Canes are in actual fact the pseudobulbs, but for the sake of simplicity, I shall continue referring to the structures as canes. But just in case you were not aware of this little deviation of common dendrobium lingo, which when talked about correctly, what we consider canes are in actual fact pseudobulbs and I thought it might be of interest. So hard cane dendrobiums have tall canes that reach from thin to chunky and possibly even a common combination of both and the leaves are generally a little darker in color than the soft cane dendrobiums. Hard cane dendrobiums are evergreen and often keep their leaves for many years before they drop them. They grow spikes from the top of the cane and produce gorgeous flower sprays and can produce spikes from leaf joints that have already had a spike form in the previous season. Soft cane dendrobiums have leafy canes that can be long and slim or chunky from top to bottom or slender at the base and then chunky along the length of the cane. The leaves are generally a little lighter in color than the hard cane dendrobiums. They grow leaves along the length of the cane and the spikes grow from the individual nodes that are along the cane itself. If, for example, a node has not bloomed in one season, it is possible that the following blooming cycle will produce blooms on a node that has not bloomed while the rest of the nodes that have bloomed will not bloom anymore. Soft cane dendrobiums are semi-deciduous or deciduous, resulting in the loss of leaves when the weather gets cold. And with that said, let's start with the most popular dendrobium types or sections, depending on which side of the fence you're sitting on. The ones that we see in the big box stores, general garden centers, and also in supermarkets, if we are lucky and happen to live in areas that actually do offer these in such outlets. The dendrobium phalaenopsis which belongs in the section Phalaeanthe. Please check the ticker on the bottom of your screen on occasions for additional information that explains why you may be seeing something on your screen, but it does not match what I'm talking about. Sorry about the inconvenience, but I would like to stick to the actual topic and not get distracted because we have quite a lot of ground to cover. Awesome, thank you. To keep with the lingo, I'm going to say denfals for short because that is what they're commonly known as. They derive their name because of how similar the blooms are to the Phalaenopsis orchid genus. These are considered among the easiest to grow under most conditions, the key word being most. Know that denfals are evergreen because we will get to other dendrobiums later on, which are not. So if you're seeing leaf drop happening, which does not pertain to a very old cane, then that is not normal. These orchids hold on to their leaves for a very long time. It is stated that the recommended temperature range for denfowls is 10 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. Well, if you're only here to understand what denfowls require when it comes to temperature, then please take away this one bit of information. They do not like cold temperatures at all. All. And I consider 10 degrees Celsius or anything below 18 degrees Celsius as cold. And they will quickly tell you if they got too chilly because this section of dendrobiums will go deciduous if they get too cold. 
While they are somewhat forgiving and will bounce back, they will only do so when the temperatures do not get cold again or else with every new growth they produce, they will weaken until there's nothing left for them to give and bounce back with. So please do not think, ah, oh, it's a dendrobium, it's tough, it'll make it. Based on my experience here in southern Spain, they don't make it and I have lost all my den fowls because I couldn't provide them with temperatures above 18 or even 20 degrees Celsius, which I would prefer to go with, just to be on the safe side. So to make the culture as simple as possible when it comes to these orchids, go by the same culture principle as what they have in their name. Phalaenopsis. Those do not like cold temperatures either, so my advice is to keep your den fowls nice and toasty, ideally nothing below 20 degrees Celsius, and don't worry as to how hot it gets. They love warmth and thrive when it's hot. No need for excess humidity either, anything around the 50% range, and you are golden to grow den fowls. Bright shade, no direct sun, and when in active growth, water and fertilize generously. Letting the media go dry during the active growing period should only happen for a very short period of time because in their preferred temperatures, they're going to be continuous growers. So ideally, you want to keep their media nice and damp and enjoy the root growth because when I did grow den fowls, that was one of the best parts of having these in active growth. They are generous root growers and will blow your mind when you see the amount of root tips coming from a single cane and they need their water and fertilizer on the regular to grow well. Now let's move on to the section spatulata. These are commonly called antelope type dendrobiums because of their twisted petals which resemble the horns of some antelopes. Seeing as they have the same care preferences as the den fowls, really copy the care guidelines for den fowls and do exactly the same with your antelope type dendrobiums. And because of that, I am surprised to not see them offered in the commercial outlets outside of specialized nurseries with the same popularity as the den fowls. Maybe someone will watch this video and be inspired to start selling them outside of the nurseries because when it comes to comparing the blooms of den fowls and the antelope type dendrobiums, as well as the bigger and blue bloom count, not to mention fragrance, the antelope type get my vote every single time. They're beautiful and more often than not have that fragrance to boot, which is usually around the honeysuckle note. For something so exotic looking to be so easy to grow, they really should be made more readily available. Under the right conditions, these, just like the den fowls, are continuous growers. So respond to what your orchid is doing when it comes to watering and fertilizing, even if that means to do so during what would be considered our our calendar winter. <laughs> our next group of dendrobiums has a very fancy name, the section dendrobium. I know, how novel, right? <laughs> anyway, this section we have two groups. In one group we can find the likes of dendrobium nobilis and similar, which are semi-deciduous, meaning that they will eventually lose their leaves on older canes, but this happens over an extended period of time and not all at once, as can be true for the second group of dens in this section. If your orchid in this section drops drops its leaves on any canes all in one fell swoop, then you may need to check your conditions, your root system, something is not quite right. It is not a detriment to the orchid if it happens, but it should not happen the same way the leaves drop in the second group, because the dens in the second group are for the most part deciduous. They grow pendulous with leaves along the entire cane. Now there are exceptions with these deciduous kind of dendrobiums in this group, because the leaves can and possibly will fall off during the cooler months of the year, but they do not necessarily have to if the environment is not conducive to such temperature drops. And the different care requirements of this group are so broad, it is best to research individual orchids for this section of dendrobium, as it just covers that many. Or remember, you can ask me in the comments if you have a specific one that you're not sure about. And also please remember to give this video a thumbs up and send it to more eyeballs by sharing it so that the channel gets more exposure. And please subscribe for the much appreciated additional support. Thank you so much in advance. The general care for the section dendrobiums is cool to warm. Just a reminder, depending on the particular orchid. Cool being 5 degrees Celsius and warm, anything as high as 30 degrees Celsius and higher, but you will need to make sure that they are well watered the hotter it is. They love their water and fertilizer during active growth, to the point 
that you cannot overdo it, and they also love a lot of bright sunshine during the winter, if the temperatures are cool enough. But if there's any doubt as to how much light, then dappled sun all day long will cover all the bases without burning the leaves during the active growth period. But they're also forgiving. As most of these are deciduous or semi-deciduous, guess what? Any sun-scorched leaves will drop off anyway, and then the next season we know that XYZ orchid needs to be a little bit more protected from direct sun and move to dappled shade. These orchids are wonderful because they are so forgiving and vigorous to say the least. They quickly grow to specimens and well, I love me orchids that do that. Now let's get to the category of dendrobiums that are also super interesting because usually they come with such different looking canes. They are fun to grow even when not in bloom and for the most part vigorous with long lasting fragrant blooms and I'm referring to the category of Latoria. Their care is very, very similar to the Denfels, with one exception. They like to have cooler temperatures, and they do like to take a rest after they have finished blooming. So during their rest period, they would prefer to be left alone, not watered as heavily anymore, just a little here and there. They don't want any fertilizer, give them nice bright shade all the time, just to let them know that it's okay to start growing again at a moment's notice. And these are not deciduous at all. On the contrary, they can grow into beautiful specimens very quickly, and even when not in bloom, they look amazing because they hold on to their leathery leaves and they have the most striking pseudobulbs to boot. If you were to ask me what I think about Latoria dendrobiums, well, I just love them. These funky pseudobulbs, they add a lot of interest to this group of orchids. Moving on, we have another section, and if my memory does not fail me, this is our last section, but if I have forgotten anything, please bring that to my and everyone's attention in the comments. Thank you for that in advance. So, the section is Calista. Doesn't that sound like some kind of a Caribbean drink or a dance? I think it's a great name. Calista. I love it. <laughs> the dendrobiums in this group are marvelous because of their growth habit. I love me some of the chubby pseudobulbs, the single leaves. They could be mistaken for some kind of Mimicophila or Cattleya. So if you don't know what you're looking at or you don't have a label, these can easily be confused, making them unique in the dendrobium family. Anyway, these are winter resters and will need a cooler and somewhat drier rest period or else they may just not bloom if kept too cozy. Dropping temperatures down to 15 degrees Celsius usually is enough, but they can tolerate temperatures as low as 5 degrees Celsius as long as they're not watered prior to that low temperature exposure. And even though exposed to lower temperatures, these dendrobiums are not deciduous. Know that they love their warmth when it comes to their active growth cycle. So water and fertilize at will, at liberty. Do not let the media dry out for too long and get those structures to grow nice and chubby. And when they have completed the growth, keep them in the dappled sun and hang a little do not disturb sign on them. Just give them a little bit of water every now and then, simulate the dew they would draw from in their natural habitat during this period of rest. So if you picked up on the fact that I said Calista was our last type of dendrobium we were going to cover, well, I have another one for you, and that's called Formose. Dendrobiums in this grouping are not happy campers when the temperatures drop below 18 degrees Celsius. To keep it real simple, these should be grown the same way as recommended with the Denfels. They are the ones that like it warm. If it gets too hot, they may throw a fit and drop some leaves. So these can be considered the divas of the dendrobiums, but if you can keep them comfortable with temperatures between 18 degrees Celsius and below 30 degrees Celsius, then they're going to make you very, very happy with some gorgeous growth, very long lasting fragrant blooms as well. And another little hint as to how these orchids like to be kept is where they come from. India, throughout Southeast Asia, Borneo and the Philippines, low altitude. So that interprets warm and steamy with a lot of airflow. That is my kind of climate, but I digress. <laughs> Just consider the corresponding care card a general care guideline for all the type of black hair dendrobiums because that is what they are commonly referred to as well. Any specifics, remember, bring that to my attention in the comments. Now, in order to not make this video too long, there are other sections of dendrobiums that you may encounter, such as a porum. Those are mainly miniatures. Calcarifera, those are semi-deciduous, like my Serratolabium, like my Victoria Regina. Then there's Dendrocorin and Dendrobium kingianum fits into that category. 
Pensiflora, that would be an example of my primary hybrid, which is the Krista Erdmann. Oxystophyllum also is another category, and with this category there is research required depending on the dendrobium that you have, as there are approximately 36 species. And then there's Stachyobium, there is approximately 25 species in this section, one of which is Peguanum, which I unfortunately lost, but I still have my Inobulbum monificum, or Dendrobium monificum, which also belongs to the Stachyobium section. But the ones I covered with the care cards, those are the main types. And I hope that this video at least gave you a breakdown as to what you are dealing with when it comes to the different types. So before I love and leave you, let me know if you have any questions on any specific dendrobiums in your collection. And let's continue the dendrobium chit chat in the comments. In the meantime, I appreciate you watching to the end. Thank you so much. And thank you Orchid Ninja Nina Sun for requesting this video. I hope I did your question justice. If you're still here, I get to wish you a fabulous day, but there is always a condition attached to that, and that is that you stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.